here now we discuss about strain energy or elastic potential energy of a wire actually how does a wire can uh, gain potential energy now whenever wire is uh, subjected tensile stress when a wire is subjected tensile stress the molecules inside the wire are uh, separated from each other against the intermolecular force of attraction we know that in a solid all the molecules and atoms are uh, attracted to each other by intermolecular force of attraction but whenever the rubber wire or any steel wire whenever it is stretched then what happens the molecules are moving away from each other against the intermolecular force of attraction means the applied force is going to do the work against the intermolecular force of attraction now this work done again is the intermolecular force of attraction is stored in the form of potential energy in the wire means whenever the work is done against the intermolecular force of attraction of the molecules in the wire is stored in the form of uh, elastic potential energy in the wire it's also called uh, strain energy strain energy or elastic potential energy means here it is the energy stored in the wire when a wire is stretched up again as the intermolecular force of attraction means uh, when a wire experiences the tensile stress now we are going to derive the formula for an equation for strain energy or elastic potential energy of a wire for this let us consider a wire of length capital l and uh, a wire of length capital l is suspended from a rigid support it is a wire of length capital l now for the wire suppose we attach a load of mass capital m so for the mass uh, the weight mg acts vertically down now here the fo force acting on the wire is that is the mg here now we suppose that initially a small elongation de is produced in the wire suppose from here to here a small elongation de is produced in the wire to produce a small elongation in the wire the applied force has to do a small work to produce the small elongation the applied force has to do a small work now let us suppose the small work should be done by the applied force is dw to produce the small elongation de now this is given by the formula dw is equal to f into de what is the f here f is the applied force f is the applied force applied force in this case is the mg we suppose this is f now the small work should be done by the applied force to produce the small elongation the wire e is a dw is equal to f into de how does this come we know that work is equal to f bar dot s bar here by applying the dot product you get f s cos theta here what is f magnitude of f bar s is magnitude of s bar what is f here applied force it is f only s is the elongation displacement de cos theta here theta is the angle between force and displacement force acting down displacement de also down so angle between them theta is 0 degrees here displacement de force f both are in downward direction angle between them is theta is equal to 0 degrees we know cos 0 is 1 so f into de that is f de so in this way the work done is dw is equal to f into d now this dw is the small work done to produce the small elongation de only yes now we have to find how much total work should be done to produce the total elongation small e without suspending load whenever no load is suspended elongation is zero after load is suspended the wire elongated to e means uh, the total elongation is produced is e initially no load suspended elongation is zero after load is suspended the total elongation produced in the wire is small e now i want to find total work done to produce the elongation from zero to e the total work done to produce total elongation zero to e can be calculated by integrating this as dw between the limits zero to e integration zero to e dw here why we are doing integration because here for every small elongation de we should do dw work for first de dw work should be done for second de dw for third de dw like that for in total elongation e there are so many de's uh, 
to produce uh, so many DAs along D elongations, we have to do so many DWs. We don't know how many DW work should be done. When all these DW works are added together, we get total work done. Now total work done W is equals to integration. Integration nothing but it is the summation, summation of all DWs uh, that gives total work done. So we have to integrate uh, the small work done between the limits 0 to E. So total work done to produce elongation 0 to E is a uh, W is equals to integration 0 to E dW that is equals to integration 0 to E dW is equals to F into D. Now we can write this F in terms of uh, Young's modulus of material of the wire. Suppose uh, Young's modulus of material of wire is a uh, Y. This is given by the formula longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain F by A by delta L by L or this can also be written as F by A by delta L means elongation E by L. Now that is equals to F by A into L by E. Y is equal we know F by A into L by E. From this right equation for F, F is equal to Y A E by L. Here now here we write F is equals to Y A E by L. Now we get W is equals to integration 0 to E. F means uh, Y A E by L into D E. Now W is equals to here Y is the Young's modulus of material of wire that is constant. A is area of cross section, initial area of cross section also constant. L is the length, initial length also constant. All constants are taken outside, they cannot be integrated. So Y A by L into integration 0 to E. E D E. Here E is the elongation. Elongation is changing. That's why only variable is integrated. So E remains in inside the integration. Now W is equals to Y A by L. Integration E D E. How does it come? It is in the form of integration X power and DX. We know the formula for integration X power and DX is equal to X power N plus 1 by N plus 1. Here instead of X we are having E instead of N having 1. So the answer is for the integration answer is x power n plus 1 means e power 1 plus 1 by n is equal to 1 again 1 plus 1. For the answer we should apply the limits 0 to e. For the answer limits are applied from 0 to e. Now w is equal to we write y a by l into e square by 2 into 0 to e. That is equal to y a by l into here first of all we, we apply the upper limit. Here this is called upper limit, this is called lower limit. Now first of all we should apply the upper limit. Instead of E, you write E. Then you get E square by 2 only. After applying upper limit, put minus. Now you apply the lower limit instead of E, that is a 0 square by 2. 0 square by 2 is 0. So you are getting Y A by L into E square by 2. Now this is the total work done. This can also be written as W is equals to one by two into I am writing this as Y A E by L into E. E into E here E into E is the E square one by two taken this side. Now that is one by two into Y A E by L that is the applied force. Y A E by L is the applied force that is F into E. Now W is equal to one by two into F into E. Now this much total work should be done to produce the elongation 0 to E. Now this work done again as the intermolecular forces of attraction is stored in the form of elastic potential energy in the wire that is represented with symbol U that is equal to 1 by 2 into F into E. Now this is the formula for elastic potential energy stored in the wire. U is equal 1 by 2 into F is the stretching force applied force into E is the total elongation produced. So, it is the formula for elastic potential energy or strain energy. Now here also we find a, a thing that elastic potential energy per unit volume of the wire. Elastic potential energy per unit volume of the wire. To find elastic potential energy per unit volume of the wire, we should divide with the volume of the wire. Now we got U is equal to 1 by 2 into F into E divided by volume of the wire e is the area of cross section into length. 
Here the wire in the shape of cylinder for the cylinder volume formula is area of cross section into length that is a A into L. Now that is equal 1 by 2 into F by A into E by L that is equal 1 by 20 F by A is the stress uh, force by A is the stress uh, and E by L is the strain. So elastic potential energy per unit volume can also be written as a Elastic potential energy per unit volume is equal to 1 by 2 into stress into strain. We can also write as <coughs> elastic potential energy by volume is equal to here stress can be written as a this stress is a longitudinal stress. Longitudinal stress can be written as in terms of y. Longitudinal stress is equal to y into strain so 1 by 2 into y into strain strain into already strain is there strain square 1 by 2 into strain square 1 by 2 into y into strain square and strain can also be written as strain is equals to stress by y so that is equal 1 by 2 into stress into stress by y stress square by y so you can also write elastic potential energy per unit volume as a 1 by 2 into stress into strain or 1 by 2 into y into strain square or 1 by 2 into stress square by y. Now these three are elastic potential energy per unit volume and this is the formula for elastic potential energy that is 1 by 2 into stretching force uh, into elongation.